Hello, and welcome to Movement, the Science of the Self. I'm your host, Ergi Pongo, and my calling is to explore movement and identity as they relate to body image and self-image. On this podcast, we share transformational stories from people in the field of movement science. We have conversations about healing and strengthening. Plus, we connect with people who have unique relationships with their bodies. If you're interested in discovering how movement science can impact your relationship with your body, we invite you to book a free consultation with Pongo Power Personal Training. Pongo Power will provide you with a complimentary movement analysis and goal setting session through understanding how our bodies move, our lives are transformed. Hello, and welcome to Movement, the Science of the Self. I'm your host, Elizabeth Pongo, and I'm here today with Dr. Emily Splickle. How are you doing today, Dr. Emily? Doing well. Thank you so much for having me on. Thanks for coming. And so this is our part two. Last we spoke, we both shared a little bit about movement and how we discover ourselves in the world of movement. Um, You know, what's important to you and your self and your identity. And today we're doing a little follow-up part two on the offering that you bring to this world in terms of other people and their sense of self, identity, movement, and tools that we can use as we train our bodies to function more efficiently and to feel more empowered and effective in the world. So Dr. Emily, what is going on with Naboso Technology? You have some new products to share. Yes. So Naboso is a sensory product line that I developed A little over four years ago, we started with one mat, so a textured fitness mat, yoga mat, you could say. And since then, we have extended our product line to be socks, insoles, release tools, hand weights, and then additional mats. And all of our products are based off of textured technology, you could say, or texture science that um, I'll just show you our neural ball with the pyramids on it. And the pyramids are designed to stimulate the nerves in the bottom of the feet and technically the palm of the hand, which are very powerful in how our brain connects to ourselves, our physical body, as well as our relationship to both the external world and the internal world. Um, So that textural touch stimulation can be very powerful. So in the foot, the foot connects us with the earth we have small nerves. Can you tell us a little bit about the small nerves in our foot? Yeah. So you could call them small nerves and then large nerves, Mm -hmm. or some of the listeners may be familiar with the term proprioception or proprioceptors. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anything that's done on like a, a wobble board or something unstable where you have to kind of control the shift in the body, those are very proprioceptive based, which you could say is a large nerve. Small nerve which is more mechanoceptive, this touch is nerves that are found in the bottom of the feet, the palm of the hand. Uh, This is glabrous skin, and it is stimulating in a slightly different way. So the stimuli that it responds to texture or two-point discrimination happens to be one of those, which is why we design our products the way that they are. Another really powerful stimulation that a small nerve is vibration. And we use vibration every time we strike the ground. So your foot striking the ground, you feel vibrations from the ground. That's actually stimulating small nerves or mechanoceptors in your feet. And then we use that information to control our movement. Uh, What's actually really interesting about small nerves versus large nerves is the small nerves are actually faster. So they will talk. To the brain quicker than a larger nerve, which is really important when you're thinking of controlling movement as an athlete or controlling movement to prevent a fall. Let's mm. say timing is really important when it comes to how we control our movement. Mm. And also touch is such a part of the healing process. You know, there's so much information when we are 
switching from fight or flight to rest, digest, that we need to be able to synthesize in order to foster our own healing modalities. And so it sounds like your technology, this ball in particular, is really stimulating the small nerves and touch and and how we synthesize information. Correct. And then, like you said, that that can be used to kind of calm, reset, control movements, connect to ourselves. Um, I actually like the aspect of the autonomic nervous system and how it regulates that. Uh, There was a research article that I recently read, and it referenced that tactile or touch is the body's natural tranquilizer. So it has Mm -hmm. this calming effect. And we see that with a lot of our products, especially in those that may have anxiety, PTSD. Uh, We actually work with a lot of children who have ADHD and autism. So they're kind of on that sensory spectrum side. And they find that using touch to be very calming. Now, what is important to understand when it comes to touch is that the specificity of the touch is also very important. So our texture is based off of the acuity of the nerve that's trying to read it. I hope that's mm-hmm. making sense. Where the best analogy would be Braille. So when mm-hmm. you're trying to read Braille, and the next time the listeners are looking at an ATM, there's there's always Braille on the ATMs. So look at the ATM, you'll see the Braille dots. The distance between those dots and the height of the dot is very specific to the sensitivity of that nerve. So our pyramids, the height, shape, distance of these pyramids is very targeted to that specific nerve, um, which is why we see a really powerful response with our products. Wow. So what would you use the ball for? Yes. So the ball, several things is it is a ball. You can open it and now you have two domes. So you awesome. can move your feet. And then inside is this little black ball. So it's a little surprise inside. And this can be used to release even deeper into the foot. Of course, the hand as well, Um, you know, face different parts with with the small ball. But let's focus primarily on the feet and the hands. If you are releasing the feet with the neural ball and the domes every day, and you can get this targeted pinpoint release, With a simultaneous neurostimulation, you are getting this benefit of activating, strengthening, saying hello to the nerves in the bottom of the feet, which is important to how we relate to our body. Um, It's also a great supporter of microcirculation. So we've actually started seeing that as another benefit of all of our products is that people are getting better circulation to their feet. Mm. Part of recovery means you have to have supportive circulation. If you if you can't flush out and detox that area, you're going to have a hard time healing and recovering. Um, so that's one of the applications. Another application with the ball, which is why we eventually evolved into our stick. So this mm-hmm. is a two pound stick, is that a lot of people were using it in their hand to stimulate the hand and either um, ground themselves when they're doing a cranial nerve reset Um, If they're ever feeling anxious, our sensory sticks are actually used by children when they're studying. It'll actually calm them. I mentioned the ADHD and autism earlier. Um, Or if people are doing rehab and they're doing balance exercises, I want to make sure that they're not just stimulating their feet, but they're also stimulating their hands. So they're accessing these very sensitive, powerful input points of the hands and the feet during a rehab exercise or a balance exercise, Um, or even for athletes, the way that you prime your nervous system before you get on the field and the court is very powerful to the way that you're going to perform. Mm. And two, you mentioned people recovering from PTSD, um, people who have chronic pain as well, like any recovery process where you are synthesizing information that takes away the emphasis, the neural net that's activated, that is that is telling you, oh, I'm in pain, but rather retraining your brain so mm-hmm. that you know that the, the, the lion or the tiger that it was attacking you is no longer there, or you're no longer in a war zone, or um, the chronic pain may be something you remember from a previous experience. And 
if we can connect to our breathing, connect to our bodies, we can calm the sense of chronic pain and refocus. And yeah. so I love what you're saying about not just paying attention to feet, but also the hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the are hands some- are actually sorry, the hands are actually much more sensitive than the feet, which makes them a really good access point into the nervous system. Um, and that's obviously sometimes more accessible from a touch perspective. Um, and if you are trying to calm the nervous system in any way, getting in out of fight or flight, as you had said, I like to couple that with mantras on top of it is actually saying and acknowledging that, you know, I feel the texture in my hand. I feel my, this hand is my hand. I'm connected. I'm looking at it. And, you know, I'm associating with this texture or this stimuli safety. And if that's not inherently associated, then that's where the trainer, the coach, the therapist, whoever's kind of guiding or working with an individual can use those words or overlay those words so that the individual can build that association. Um, I call it anchoring and you're anchoring a emotional mental state with a stimuli. And that's how you can also use the Naboso products is they can be anchored to associate calmness and safety. That's wonderful. And how many pounds did you say the hand weight is? So this is two pounds and you get two sticks when you buy them. So they could be used together with the two weights. Um, Why it's weighted is that resistance is a stimulus to your nervous system as well. It's actually proprioceptive. So this is our first device that is mechanoceptive and proprioceptive. Uh, I work a lot in my podiatry practice with chronic pain and chronic movement disorders And it's really important for them to be able to connect to their physical body. A way that you can do that, obviously, outside of texture is by having your muscles contract, which means you have to pick up weights. You could use wrist weights as well, uh, which is a really good way to connect to the muscular proprioceptive system. So this is our way to say, okay, resistance and weight and just a slight pull on the joint capsule and the fascial system is integrating that aspect of the nervous system. Let's combine that with texture. So we kind of get these two benefits in one product. Brilliant. So lovely. And so, you know, from head to toe, we're whole people, we exist in the world and we tend to get very much into our heads sometimes. But as we go through our day, it is just so important to connect to how we are moving through the world. You know, our sense of spatial relations. And part of that is having these anchoring techniques and ways to connect with our body. So outside of the neural ball, which is kind of this release tool or activation tool, the sensory sticks, uh, one of our other newer products is our socks. So this is a, that's the inside of the sock. This is a ankle high compressive sock. We also have a knee high compressive sock. And then on the inside is our texture that we have on all of our products. So Mm -hmm. this is stimulating that same pyramidal pattern uh, that will stimulate the mechanoceptors in the bottom of the feet. We call this our recovery sock. The reason why we're positioning it initially from the recovery side is it's the first time that there's ever been texture inside a garment to this level. So we are initially seeing how do people respond to it? Obviously people responded very well, which is great. So now we're developing some other kind of extensions like an all day sock, a neuropathy sock, things like that. Um, But this is a really, really good way to give your feet a mini massage at the end of the day. You could just think of this as a massage. It's obviously stimulating. So it's going to wake up the nerves. And then the aspect that we're researching right now with a couple different universities is the circulation benefit. So if you can, again, improve skin perfusion, microcirculation, circulation to the plantar fascia, to our muscles, to our nerves, that's a very uh, longevity protective, right? My, my goal with all of our products is 
to optimize movement longevity. We want people to move well for a really long time. And for that, it requires optimal foot health because that's your body's foundation. Yeah. I mean, what's fascinating about the brain and training our brains is that neuroplasticity is is always possible. We can always create new neurological pathways and new um, thought patterns. But as we get older, if we don't find new information, then I think it's very easy to get into habits and habitual ways of thinking and moving. And so really it's up to each one of us to keep learning how do I move so that I can move in a way that's efficient and where I feel comfortable in my body. I mean, it's a lifelong journey. I think everyone faces. <laughs> I don't think anyone gets away with just existing in a <laughs> you know perfect world. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I love the fact that the technology is on the inside of the sock. That's so interesting. Yeah. And that this was an extension to our insoles that we've had. We've had the insoles for a couple of years. Uh, we launched a new insole, which is our green one. And the green one is actually double-sided. So you can flip it over, which to kind of extend off of what you were saying, which was just so perfect, is that kind of mixing it up a little bit and not staying with the same movement patterns or stimuli is that we say that as well at Nimboso, which is why we want people to kind of play around with the different products, all of the different insoles that have different levels of stimulation. If you alternate them in your shoes or you mm. flip the duo over, you get what we call texture variability. And I always give the fitness analogy of if you're trying to lose weight, you can't do the same cardio, same ways, same intensity every day because you are going to plateau. You have to shock the system. You have to run, do hills, do the bike, right? It's kind of that variability that's avoiding adaptation mm -hmm. uh, with the nervous system. It's really built around tuning stuff out. Um, it's actually called the sensory gating theory or mechanism that if we have a constant stimulus, your brain is going to start to tune it out so you can pay attention to other things. So we want people paying attention to their feet, but if you are having that same stimulus, you have to make sure that you shake it up a little bit to force the brain to then pay attention again to the feet. And that's really important, um, again, at Naboso because of wanting people to feel their feet, to not, not fall, you have to be able to feel your feet and feel the ground. So especially for that population, it's probably the best example of why variability of texture and stimulation forces the brain to be present with the feet because we don't want them to fall. We, we can't have them start to sensory gate it or tune it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, sensory gating or is that, would you say that's the same as habitualization? Most likely. So uh, in New York city, all of the sirens that you hear or actually right. don't hear them anymore. <laughs> is, Thankfully not as much. Yeah, yeah. So that, that would be the, same thing. So you living in New York City or any urban setting that you no longer hear the traffic and the horns, you're kind of tuning it out. So it's it's really allowing your ability to pay attention. If we actually saw everything that was coming at us every day and heard everything and felt everything, we would be essentially sensory paralyzed because it would be too much. Um, Here's something interesting is people that actually do have PTSD and a history of trauma and anxiety, they actually have a slight disre dysregulation in their sensory gating mechanism, and it is less efficient and they are hyper aware. Mm -hmm. So they, they're then noticing everything in a way that it does kind of start to paralyze them in a sense, because they can't pay attention to anything else because they're over here. So that's where controlled sensory and almost quieting the other aspects is really good for those who have a dysregulated sensory gating mechanism. Absolutely. And I think part of longevity and part of 
it's a sustainable life really where we where we want to be engaged is that we can trust ourselves and what i like about all of your products is that it's the individual who can use them um, mm-hmm. at their at their will it's not like you need someone else to apply this to you this isn't a procedure or a doctor telling you, you know, you have to show up on this date to get that procedure. This is something we can do every day, something we could even look forward to and something that enhances our quality of life, which is really what the long game is all about. (laughs) Yeah. Like enjoying our lives. Yeah. I'm all about anything for quality of life. They're not, they're not medical emergencies, right? But Really, at the end of the day, that's what people are looking at is what is this quality of life? And it is the small habits or um, routines that you create. And then the consistency of that, that is what manipulates quality of life. So I am very proud that Naboso is a product within the quality of life space. Mm -hmm. And I always enjoy our conversations because each one of your offerings is firmly rooted in an evidence-based scientific rationale, which makes it so exciting because it is fact. (laughs) It's not someone's opinion. Like it's not, well, you know, maybe if you paint your bedroom blue, you'll sleep better. You know, it's, it's really something we can experience and feel and, um, and discover for ourselves because of a a firmly rooted uh, rationale based in science, which I really appreciate. Yeah, it's very important for us to be, to represent trust and transparency for the individual who is looking at our products that yes, they are based off of science. Uh, They were developed after, after existing research. And then we are doing research study ourselves on the various products and to just really explore The power of touch is what it's going back to, right? Our stimuli within the touch umbrella is very specific, but that's where as the company grows and expands and kind of my future vision for the company is bringing in other stimuli that is connecting people to themselves, bringing in the resistance was the first one. Um, Our knee-high compression sleeves is just a little bit of a tease into compression, which is very important to how we connect to ourselves as well. Um, So stay tuned. (laughs) There there will be many more product iterations that come out to help people continue uh, to move well and to connect to themselves. And so, Dr. Emily, are you still seeing patients in in your headquarters in Arizona? I am. Most of them are actually virtual. Thank you Ah. for COVID to that. (laughs) But uh, yes, I am. And it is important to me, even though I'm a CEO and kind of on this other business side, to still be able to connect within what my original training one, which is podiatric medicine, right? And I see a very unique patient population base. Um, I'd mentioned earlier that it's chronic pain, chronic movement dysfunction, chronic movement disorders. So they typically are looking for a perspective that is just outside of the box, right? They've exhausted a lot of other professionals. They've seen five plus, you know, professionals in a myriad of of specialties and they're still not well. They still have chronic pain. And then they come to me and they're like, is it my feet? Is it the way that I relate to the ground? Is it, you know, my breath to my foot and, you know, kind of where is it? And um, I actually get quite a few referrals as well from orthopedists, neurologists, other specialists who just say they're not responding to the way that I was trained for these things in a more typical Western medicine approach. Can you take a look and see if it is something, um, you know, I call it functional podiatry. So I'm, I'm looking really whole person at the way that they relate to movement and how it connects from the ground up. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you think about our lives, we do really well with coaches, with people who can teach us in a, in such a way that we can hear what the teacher is saying. And I think that part of 
um, Western medicine, unfortunately, is there's a bit of authoritarianism and a bit of a here, let me give you this pill or let me sign you up for a surgery. And I think that grows distrust in the medical system. And, mm -hmm. and so it's really important to have doctors that we can trust. And so I think it's wonderful that you can see people online virtually now. That's just one of the miracles of, you know, a tragedy is that we revolutionize and we, we grow and evolve. So I think that's fabulous that you can see people online now. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. So how do people buy your products? If people would like to get a few of these tools in their toolkit. Yeah. So all of the Naboso products are available at naboso.com. That is N-A-B-O-S-O.com. If they use word Pongo, they get 10% off. So make sure you use Pongo. Um, and on there, you will get um, the products, but then it'll also link to our YouTube channel that has lots of videos. We put out a lot of blogs. Education is a huge part of what I do as well. So I want to educate and empower so that people are seeing that our products are not just a physical product, but it comes with then this continuation of programming and knowledge to truly understand the body and really sensory science, which is so powerful. It really is. I mean, if you think about massage therapy and any type of therapy, which involves sensory and touch, it's just so powerful. So having options is, is really wonderful and fundamental. So thank you for creating the products that you've, that you've invented and created. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining Movement, the Science of the Self today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. And I look forward to maybe a part three. And <laughs> <laughs> I would happily come back. Thank you so much for inviting me. Okay, wonderful. Well, that's our show, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you on the next pod. Hey, thank you for tuning into the show and listening. If you're interested in understanding how your body moves, Pongo Power offers a complimentary fitness assessment and goal setting session. This 55 minute appointment is completely free and you can do it through the magic of Zoom in the comfort of your own home. Just book online by heading over to freefitnessassessment.pongopower.com. I've been a personal trainer for 20 years and I've helped hundreds of humans to gain true physical and mental strength. You can learn more about our team of personal trainers on our website, pongopower.com. When we learn how to exercise safely and effectively, we experience true freedom. On Movement, the Science of the Self, we provide you with the inspiration you need to move your body as you cultivate your own sense of identity. In joining the conversation about how we identify ourselves, Pongo Power is committed to the empowerment of each individual's right to choose. Now go out there and get some movement. <laughs>